raised in water, sealed by the Spirit, cleansed by the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to Mass today as we celebrate the feast of the baptism of the Lord. And we rejoice, uh, we continue to rejoice in the Christmas season and all your beautiful decorations, reminding us of the great gift that God is. Uh, in sending Jesus to us to be with us, save us, help us, and forgive us. So let us acknowledge our sins in preparation for these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are baptized by John in the Jordan. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are God's chosen one. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Our prayer of praise to the Blessed Trinity. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray, gathering into this opening prayer, each of our personal intentions this morning. Almighty, ever-living God, who, when Christ had been baptized in the River Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well, you shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you do not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ who is Lord of all, what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. In song, let us acclaim the gospel of the Lord. Over Christmas, Father Scott, our pastor, wanted us to have some holy water. I don't know if you missed it or not, but we have these little vials in the church entrance along with a candle. In fact, we still have some of these vials on the information desk um, if you're still interested in some holy water. You know, we've been going without holy water since, it was about March, since we emptied our fonts. and So he wanted us to be able to be reminded of our Christian dignity that we received on the day of our baptism. You know, water is a prominent image throughout all the scriptures. We go right to the very beginning, the, the first book of Gen- Genesis. We see the, the, the world was a, a formless waste, and, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters as God begins to create, to bring the earth into existence. We see also in the, the um, Noah and the ark, where the deluge of the waters and in the ark, and they send out this dove, symbol of the Holy Spirit, to look for land. And the dove comes back with a, an olive branch, a symbol of life, of hope, of peace for the people. And of course today, the, the passage from Mark's Gospel, the baptism of Jesus by John in the Jordan River. This is my beloved son. We see the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. God speaks of his Son. You know, God takes something as ordinary as water, you know, the basis of life. You know, know, when when scientists go out into the outer space to look for life, you know, sometimes I think maybe they should look for garbage. It seems like wherever people go, there's always garbage. But no, that's not what they look for. They look for water because... Life as we know it can't exist without water. So they figure if we can find water, maybe there's potential for human life there. So Jesus takes this basis of life, but he gives it a deeper meaning. Remember the traditional definition of a sacrament, an outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. You know, God takes something ordinary, gives it a deeper meaning, and he gives us his life. In this case, the life of the Holy Spirit. The same spirit we see at the creation, hovering over the waters, the dove. This is my beloved son. And there also water cleanses. You know, John, the baptism of repentance. Baptism takes away our sins. It also initiates us. Initiates us into the body of Christ, into the church. You know, we were created by a God who wants to be found. Seems like a contradiction sometimes because we're always looking for God. We want to find God. And God wants to be found. We celebrate Christmas, the birth, the incarnation. God takes on our human nature through the Virgin Mary. The first ones to be notified are the shepherds, the poor, marginal shepherds. The angels announce the birth and they come to adore their new Savior. Last Sunday we 
we celebrate the, the epiphany, the manifestation of who Jesus is. God's revealing himself to us. The three kings, you know, these were non-Jewish people, Gentiles from the East. God's salvation is open to all people. And now today, with the baptism, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. You know, Jesus didn't have to be baptized. It's not like he had sin on him. But he wanted to sanctify these waters. The waters that we use to initiate one another into the body of Christ. He wanted to bless them through his own baptism, and also to walk with us, with sinners. You know, God meets us where we are. And that's where we encounter him. And he comes for our salvation. We read in the scriptures when Jesus was baptized, you know, an early Jewish um, hearer, person who heard these words, would recognize the connection to the temple. Remember when John says, there's the Lamb of God as he's coming to be baptized. Lamb, the, the Jewish people would have thought right away the sacrificial lamb one who's offered at the temple, and it's in place of the person they offer this lamb for their sacrifice, for their sins. Of course, Jesus is the Lamb of God who comes to God's Son who dies for our sins. And this other passage today, the Spirit, um, on coming up from the waters, Jesus is baptized, the heavens are torn open. I have an unusual phrase, the heavens are torn open. Remember when Jesus was crucified? Remember you always had that, that in the Holy of Holies, there was a curtain separating that from the people. This curtain is torn apart when Jesus is crucified. The same sense of tearing apart the heavens, the separation between God's kingdom and ourselves has been torn open. That our salvation has been made possible to us through the baptism of Christ. And that's the same baptism, the same spirit that you received at your baptism, the same spirit that I receive, that spirit still dwells within us, waiting to, to live out the gospels that God, that Jesus has preached to us. You know, this God that wants to be found, this God has already found us. You know, God always acts first. When we're searching for God, that's because God's already found us. You know, through the waters of baptism, we receive that spirit. God has found us. And when Jesus enters into those muddy waters of the Jordan in Israel, if you in the Holy Land, if you've ever been there or seen pictures, it's not the nice, clean, pure water that we put in these vials. It's kind of a muddy. Human life is kind of muddy, dirty, sin. You know, we're all guilty of this. And Jesus enters into that to sanctify that, to raise us in holiness so that we can someday enter into God and make our salvation possible. You know, of all the, uh, the difficulties in society today, I hear so many people say, you know, what's going on? You know, what, does God abandon us? We seem like, you know, we're, we're definitely in need of a, some sort of a moral guide, you know, some sort of a barometer. Things seem to be unraveling in our society. Well, we have that guide in Christ. Jesus came to be baptized to walk with us. He's with us. His Spirit is still guiding us. Guiding us through those waters of baptism. The Gospels, the church teachings, our community of faith to support one another in our faith, to live it out in these, these difficult and trying times that we find ourselves in. And many times with baptisms, I have people ask me, well, is, is baptism still necessary for salvation? You know, these things haven't fallen to the wayside. God's words are still truth and life. We read in John's Gospel, if you read a little later, we're, today we're from, well, this is Mark's Gospel today, but in John's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 3 to 5, you know, look at that. You don't have your Bibles with you when you get home. You know, Nicodemus is coming to see Jesus, and, and Jesus says to him, this is at night, he says, unless one is born of water and the Holy Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So yes, God has tied up the gift of salvation with the sacrament of baptism. But the church also teaches that you know, God is not bound by the sacraments. You know, God's mystery and how God brings about salvation of his people is not bound by that. But for us who, who know Christ, who had Christ preached to us, this is our salvation. It's through the waters of baptism. You know, the God who, who wants to be found, the God who has already found us in the waters of baptism. You know, we, 
we continue to live out that baptism. That's what God calls us to. And every time that we, we bless ourselves, if you have some of this holy water, take some home. When you sign yourself with the sign of the cross, it reminds us of our Christian dignity, the Christian dignity of our own baptism, that we share in the, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ so that someday we too may be able to enter into God's kingdom. Our profession of faith, as we say the words of the creed, let's try to take to heart more fully the beautiful teachings that we think about and pray about. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, he was crucified. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to live up to our dignity as God's children using these intercessions that the Church will continue to proclaim the gospel of peace and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will all live out the promises of our own baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are anxious, depressed, or living in fear will find hope in the risen Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the coronavirus pandemic, that God will free us from this dangerous virus, make the vaccines effective, and help rebuild our communities of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that those who have died will inherit the life promised those born again of water and the Holy Spirit, especially Fran Sauer, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all consolation, continue to shower us with your blessings and graces. Renew the Holy Spirit within us. Continue to grant all that we need to please you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. <clears throat> Amen. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of all of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with, your, with the blessed, her blessed spouse, St. Joseph, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity our pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Donald our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us all safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.